The last topic we'll be looking at with regard to our asset notes receivables will be the impairment of notes receivables. And that's because, well, what if we have a debtor that we've loaned money to and they become insolvent and they can't pay back the principal and interest? Well, we're gonna have to report an impairment charge. So let's go ahead and look at this scenario and we'll reports an impairment charge in this video. So David Company lends $100,000 on January 1st, 2015 to Amazon in exchange for a $100,000 three-year 8% note. And the effective or market rate is in the bracketed uh, symbols. And you should already be thinking to yourself, what will be the present value if both the stated rate and the effective rate equal each other? And the interest is going to be paid annually. So the 8% that is going to be paid annually to us. So I'm going to draw a timeline since I always draw timelines. And you know, you just can't stop things that you're used to. So I might as well build another one. And let's say $8,000, the interest being paid to us. Uh, we're going to write it down. And of course, the initial amount that we lent was 100000 and the principal that will be returned to us will also be 100,000 at the maturity of the notes. And to keep things a little bit more organized as we go through this, I decided to make a table that's going to record all the interest payments and the principal. So I'm just gonna draw this up real quickly and I'm just going to make a little line here and then say that the interest will be $8,000 for 2015 2016 same and 2017 the principal will also be returned to us so this is what is on our contract let's go ahead and first recognize this note before we do anything else so I'm going to take this button that I always use to show that we're recognizing uh, the notes and the amount we're going to recognize, well, if the if the stated rate equals the effective rate, we know that this note is issued at par. And the amount that we are going to value it when it's at par is its face value. So we're going to debit notes receivables for $100,000. And the amount of asset we'll be giving up, which is cash, is also $100,000. Next, we need to now show that one year has gone by and that we're going to report some interest because we've received $8,000 of cash. So I'm going to say uh, cash is being debited and interest revenue or interest income will be credited. I've seen more text use income so I'm just gonna stick with that and it's gonna be eight thousand dollars and I'm just going to also draw a squiggly bracket to say times two because I don't want to write this out twice and I'll just it basically summarizes that we've recognized interest for 2015 and 2016 so now we're at the end of 2016 and now let's say that it is probable that we are not going to uh, receive the entire principal back let's say that well we know we've received eight thousand dollars for both years and we'll also receive the interest in the third year, but the amount of principal that will be returned to us is only 80,000 because they're insolvent and they can't pay their debts. So whenever, whenever it is probable that uh, they're not gonna be able to uh, pay back the principal and the interest, we have to make an impairment charge on our books. Uh, so I should actually write that the expected, this is what is expected at the moment, and this is what was on our contract. So what we're gonna do now is we have to find the difference between uh, the carrying value, the carrying value of what's on our books, and I'm gonna say, uh, carrying value, uh, subtract the fair value is going to equal the impairment charge. Perfect. Okay, so the carrying value of our note that's on our books, well, there's no discount or uh, premium on 
our note. It's issued at par, so the carrying value is going to just simply be $100,000. So the carrying value is going to be $100,000. Next, we need to find the fair value because that is the second part to figuring out the impairment charge. So I'm going to find the fair value by discounting the cash flows on our expected uh, our expected note. So present value of the single sum part of the note, which is the $80,000 that's going to be returned to us, and we'll find the present value by using this equation. And then we're going to manipulate it so that its present value is equal to 80,000 divided by 1 plus the effective rate, 8%. And there's only one year left on this contract. So we're going to use 1 instead of 3. And that amount is going to equal 74,074. And then the second part is we have to find the present value of the interest. That's remaining. And we could use the single sum equation that we just used, but I'm going to stick to uh, the, the annuity formula just since we're normally using that for interest and I don't want you guys to be confused. So we're going to use this equation that we've used many times in the past and we're going to sub in $8,000 at the cash payment. The rate or effective rate is 8% and the term uh, that remains is one year and when we sub all of that in you're going to get 7,407 and the sum of these two will be the present value or the fair value of our expected note which is 81,481 and the difference between what's on our books and what it's worth at the moment is going to be the impairment the impairment charge which is 18,000 519. Bam. We are almost done. We just now need to record the adjustment to show that our note is impaired. So I'm going to take this adjustment button, move it down here, and we are going to record the impairment. And the way we'll do this is by using the two accounts, bad debts expense, which you've probably heard of from our intro course and allowance for doubtful accounts. And that's because a receivable is uncollectible. So we're going to use these two accounts, which are commonly used for uncollectibles. And we're going to report it at 18,519 because we need to decrease uh, the value of our note on our books. And that way, the bad debt expense will show up as a cost on the income statement and the allowance for doubtful accounts will keep uh, the correct net realizable value for our receivables and it will show up on our balance sheet since it's a contra asset account. Uh, this may be a little bit confusing but I'm going to delve more into the details as to why these two accounts are used in the next tutorial when we look at a little bit of a more difficult example, uh, finding an impairment on a discounted or a note that is issued at a premium. So I'll see you guys in the next one.